I'm actually in my church. We are in a, an all day program. The arrangement is different. We are back looking at the genealogy of Adam. Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom came slew. And to Seth, to him also was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. And last episode, we look at verse 25 and we look at verse 26a. And today, we want to look at the second section of verse 26. This section where he says, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. This verse seems to suggest that something different and remarkable started happening at the time that Enosh was born to set okay and you remember we mentioned that the last episode now what happened at this point when enos was born will affect the trajectory of our story and that is why this is very very important to us now the first thing we need to understand and i pointed this out the last time that many 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 translation of the bible actually translated it this way that then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. But there are other Bible translations that gives us alternative rendering of this verse. So I'm going to read one such. The International Standard Version give us an alternative rendering of that verse. So let's read that in International Standard Version, ISV, Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 to 26. Later on, after Adam had sexual relations with his wife, she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, because God granted me another offspring to replace Abel since Cain murdered him. Now verse 26 is what I want you to pay attention to. Seth also fathered a son, whom he called Enoch. It is this last phrase that is different. At that time, profaning the name of the Lord began. So the question is, why the difference? And which one of these is the correct one? And is there any implication to this? Which one of these translation people accept seems to hinge on this fact that people feel that Seth was this holy, righteous, godly lineage that God has chosen and that this verse is one of the verse, this phrase is one of the phrases that people actually use. Not the only one, I have to say. But this phrase is one of the evidence that people use to want to prove that this lineage of set was a godly and holy lineage and my point is this the choosing of that lineage does not necessarily hinge on the fact that every single one of the member of that lineage was holy or righteous or godly one of the things i'm also establishing today is that what people of enoch's days do or don't do what people of set day do or don't do will not nullify god's choice of this lineage for example the day of noah and we are going to see that in future episode the days of noah was wicked and god destroyed that generation but that does not disqualify noah as god's chosen man so we need to understand that anyway the subject matter here is not sight or his son enoch that is not the subject matter the subject matter here is rather the situation report of what was happening in the day of enoch so that was that is the subject matter here now having cleared that out of the way the common interpretation of this verse that we read the second part of verse verse 26 the common interpretation of this verse is that in the day days of enoch that organized public worship of god was restored like a form of revival and again like i said this is one of the evidence that people always point to to say that the lineage of set was the godly image and people interpret this verse to mean that you know what organized public worship of god was restored and people have to say organized public worship because we know that before this time there were men that were calling upon the name of the lord i mean abel called upon the name of the lord and we saw in previous teaching that to all intent and purpose he must have learned that from his dad and mom so we could not say that people actually started calling the name of the lord at the time of Enoch. So the most common translation of this verse is for people to say yes. What the Bible is saying is that organized public 
worship of God was restored. And people tend to use that, just opposing that to the lineage of Cain to say, you know what, the lineage of Cain was so corrupt, but the lineage of Seth through Enoch actually brought this revival, brought this restoration of organized public worship of God. Now, there's a problem with that translation. There's a problem with that understanding. The trajectory of our story that we have read is not that of revival. So if the Bible says that men began to call upon the name of the Lord, and if we are saying that means that organized public worship was restored as if there was a revival, the fact is that the context doesn't support that. The story up to this point is that of general decline. Even though there were men like Abel who are exception to the rule, who sought the face of God, but the general trajectory of the of the history of human up to this point is that of general decline. Also, as we shall see in future episodes, the trajectory of our story from here moving forward is not that of a community that is revived. It's not that of a community or a people that is full of God. It's not that of a community or a people that is corporately worshiping God. That is not the story. That is not the story even moving forward. In fact, the trend of our story is that almost everyone became corrupt and only few people actually work with God. And what you are going to see as we move forward in this story, in this genealogy of Seth, that actually the people that work with God, at least at this point, they were not the majority. If anything, they were the minority. Only few people in this biblical lineage of Seth are recorded for us to have worked with God and to have worshipped God correctly like Abel did. Now, let's try and underscore that a little bit. Now, we are at the tail end of Genesis chapter 4. And like we mentioned in previous episode, Genesis chapter 5 actually gave us the complete genealogy of Adam from Adam all the way to Noah. And when you look into Genesis chapter 5 from Adam to Noah, you will notice that it was only one man that the Bible stopped to reveal to us that walk with God until we finally came to Noah. So from, from, from Adam, Seth, all the way down to Noah, it was only when it comes to Enoch that the Bible stopped. And the Bible says Enoch walked with God. And I'm going to come to that in a bit. Now, let us see the genealogy of just a, in a diagrammatic form because I don't want to read, read the whole thing. So I'm going to show us a diagram that show us in a, in a diagram the genealogy that is written for us in Genesis chapter 5. And then I'm going to read Genesis chapter 5 verses 21 to 29. Now, let me just say that this diagram I'm going to show you is not mine. I took this up the internet and it's from this website called Bible Blender. And you can see straight away here the genealogy right from Adam. Now, we have looked at the genealogy of Cain. So I'm not going to go into that. Obviously, Abel was killed. And here we are looking at the genealogy of Adam through Seth. And when you read Genesis chapter 5, essentially it took you through this genealogy from Seth to Enos to Canaan to Mahalel to Jared to Enoch to Methuselah to Lamech to Noah then to Shem, Ham and Japheth. Now let me just say something quickly here before we go on. One of the things you would notice straight away when you look at the genealogy of Cain and the genealogy of Seth that quite a number of the names are repeated. <laughs> quite interestingly enough. I mean, you can understand that. I guess they are all getting used to giving people names. Also, the fact that quite a number of those names overlap. Why do you have the name that was in the genealogy of Cain? Why do you have them overlap in the genealogy of Seth? Maybe because both of them are re reflecting the condition of the situation of the society in which both this line was developing. Just maybe. The Bible didn't give us the exact reason, but I just want you to know that I think it is quite interesting that quite a number of these names are actually repeated. So what we are going to do now is to read Genesis chapter 5 because I want to focus on three of these names. Genesis chapter 5 and I'm going to read from verses 21 to 29. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 300 years and 65 years and Enoch walked with God and it was not for God took him and Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech and Methuselah lived after he had become Lamech seven 
180 and two years and begat sons and daughter and all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died and obviously you know if you study your bible very well that Methuselah is the man that lived the longest years on the face of the earth and that is going to be important if not today in our next episode by God's grace verse 28 and Lamech lived 180 and two years and begat his son and called his name Noah saying this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hand because of the ground which the Lord has caused now why did I read that is because I want to focus on these three characters in this list because it relates to this query of Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 I want to focus on Enoch I want to focus on Methuselah and I want to focus on Noah okay is that okay so let me put my diagram back up again remember again I'm saying that again this is not mine I got it from somebody else okay now we've come to Enoch and we all know the story of Enoch we all know the story of Enoch very well the Bible tells us here that Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and he begat Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Now this is my question here. If it was the norm that people were walking with God in the days of Enoch, if that was the norm, then it would have been totally unnecessary for God to underscore the fact that Enoch walked with God. If it is true that from the day of Enoch in this holy godly lineage, if it is true that from that point people started working with God, it will have been totally unnecessary for God to now tell us or for the Bible to now tell us about this one man because the way it is written here in Genesis chapter 5 tend to suggest that this was the exception because up till now it was just this one gave back to that one and gave back to that one and died and the Bible get to Enoch and the Bible say Enoch what with God and it was not for God took him and obviously we can go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and the Bible says because before he was taken by God he had this testimony that he please God and what I'm saying here is that the fact that God emphasized this work of Enoch with God tend to suggest that this was not the norm rather that this was the exception Enoch war with God and he was not because God took him we are just trying to see this second part of Genesis chapter 4 is it that people started calling upon the name of the Lord or is it actually that from that point on people started profaning the name of the Lord and that is what we are trying to look at here so again the record or the information that was given to us about Enoch here tend to suggest that actually the this was the exception that the norm was not that people were working with God but let's move on to Methuselah and, and you see we are we are taking this step by step so we know that Enoch was a spiritual man Enoch walked with God then Enoch gave birth to his son and Enoch called the name of his son Methuselah now Methuselah is an interesting character that we are going to come to because as you will know I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago he lived the longest is the is the oldest man that ever lived in the history of human and we will you will see by the grace of God in this episode that that has something to do with the grace and the mercy of God so Enoch gave birth to his son and Enoch called his name Methuselah do you know what Methuselah means and this is very very important there is a great implication with respect to the name Methuselah because the, that name actually tells us something about the state of the nation into which he was born. Enoch called his name Methuselah. What we see here is that Enoch gave his son a prophetic name that points to a future event that was going to happen and this is very very important the name Methuselah means he dies and the death or arrow of God he dies and the death of arrow actually that is what it means he dies 
and the dart of arrow. And when you complete that sentence, actually it means it dies and the dart or the arrow of God's vengeance comes. Or it has been translated this way, it dies and the sending forth of the water comes. In other words, when Enoch named Methuselah, Enoch gave him a prophetic name that was actually pointing to the coming judgment of God. He gave the name to Methuselah that actually point to the coming flood that is going to judge human. Now, this is very, very important. Wrapped up in the name of Methuselah was already a prophecy about the coming judgment that we see in the, in, in the days of Noah. Can I tell you something more? Actually, when you look at the genealogy and when you compute the years that somebody lives and dies, born, lives and dies, born, lives and dies, you will realize that Methuselah died in the year that the flood happened. Methuselah actually died in the year that the flood happened. More about that in the future episode, maybe the next episode. What I'm saying here is that the trajectory of what we see here is not a trajectory of a group of people that are revived, that are worshipping God, a, a group of lineage that are holy, that are godly compared to Cain's lineage or to to try to justify why that verse must be translated that from the days of Enoch, people started calling upon the name of the Lord. Obviously, lastly, let's look at the name of the, the, the last character here, which is Noah. Okay, now when Noah was born by Lamech, okay, verse 28 of chapter, f- chapter 5 says, And Lamech lived 180 and two years, and begat his son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hand because of the ground which the Lord has caused. So the name of Noah suggests that things were not getting any better. What I'm saying is this, when you look at the the, the, the contest, the contest that lead to Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 and the contest that lead into Genesis chapter 5, when you look at the genealogy himself and what the genealogy actually stands for, it is very, very clear that the common translation and understanding of Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 b that says that men began to call upon the name of the Lord is diametrically opposite to the trajectory of of the contest of this verse. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying one is wrong or right. I'm just saying that if we understand it to mean that there was a revival at this point, it's totally out of context of what was going on before and what was happening after. Rather, the alternative reading that says at that time, profaning the name of the Lord began, seems to be the more fitting into the immediate context. I'm not saying one is wrong. I'm not saying one is right. We are going to look into the test itself next episode by the grace of god and you are going to see something that is really quite interesting but what i'm saying is here the the point here is that saying that at this point people suddenly having this revival is totally out of context of what we are dealing with that it will seem from what we are looking at so far it will seem actually that from that point people actually became worse that they actually something demonic seems to started happening at that point. We don't know what it is. Now, the, it's as if there was a downward trend. There was a downward slope. And it's as if from this point, things got many, many times worse. That is what this contest seems to point out. Now, there are still other few points that we need to consider before we then decide one way or the other. But we are going to stop it here by the grace of God and pick it up next episode. Again, thank you for joining me today. Remember, is i'm just i've tried to put things together to get this going if things didn't work the way normally work pardon me i hope this has been a blessing to you and if you are listening to me and you're not born again look the time is short jesus christ is coming soon for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him will not perish but have an everlasting life this is the day of salvation a time is coming when it will be too late and you can bow your head wherever you are admit that you are a sinner you need help ask jesus to help you he is as close to you in fact is closer to you than the very breath in your nostril ask him he will save you he will take the heart of evil out of you give you a new heart he will walk with you the rest of this heart with you and when this life is over because this life is going to be over you will then spend eternity with him in the new heaven and new earth. do it right now